This is Annette Enjai with Culturally Savvy. This is Trenton Honey, be a part of it. So we're bringing you here today at, to the Barracks Museum here in Trenton, where they're having today three centuries of African-American soldiers. So we're gonna take you inside and show you the impact that African-American soldiers had on this country. Black soul. Okay, so we're going to go inside and take the tour of the barracks. Soldier Brooks will tell you about the life and the role of blacks in the American Revolution. We have 5,000 blacks who fight for the Continental Army. 5,000. There are as many as one, as much as one third of the Continental Army. You would know this from all the paintings around that you see, and, and they're not there. But we uh, we were part of this thing from the beginning. Lexington, Concord, Bunker Hill. We were there from the beginning, and this is the message we're trying to get, get out. Sergeant Al Ward is going to lead you in the presentation about the roles of blacks in the American Civil War. Thank you. Hello. Uh, 209,000 black soldiers served in the Union Army during the American Civil War. They represented 166 regiments. There's 1,000 men in a regiment, approximately, and that lets you know that there was an extensive participation of black soldiers during the American Civil War. They fought in 439 battles, 34 of which were major battles, which affected the outcome of the Civil War. This is uh, one of those called the Corporal Norman Marcel. And the bottom line was that now they had to do something with these blacks at the end of the Civil War. All right? And they needed to know. Well, they said, well, we could send them back home. Some of them, they did send them back home. But they said, in general, because we made this law, just put it, put it in place, okay, to help prosecute this war. We won. They said, what? Society's mind is still before that. String them up. You know what I'm saying? Or if they looked at a black person and they said, hey, he may have been one of them to help prosecute that war. This is our World War One exhibit. Uh, Private, uh, I mean, Sergeant uh, Mann will be taking you through this exhibit. He belongs to the 369th Hellfighters and he will tell you of the experience. The 15th New York National Guard, they were eventually redesignated in the 369th uh, Division, and that's what we know today as the Harlem Hellfighters. Now, they were part of the 93rd Infantry Division. The 93rd got sent to France to fight under the French flag, as opposed to the 92nd Regiment, which was also uh, composed of several black regiments. They fought under the American flag, but they didn't get as much action as the 93rd. The 93rd, they were on the front lines for the duration of the war once they got sent over there. The last units to reach the front, but as it turns out, the 369th, they won more medals than any other American unit in the war, over 170. This is Sergeant Charles Whitaker, and he is in charge of the World War II exhibit for those much lighter. He's going to carry. This is the main weapon that's carried by the average infantryman. This right here, third caliber, this one is 30 odd six. It's fed by a magazine that carries eight rounds. This is an uh, empty clip right here. This weapon right here is an original weapon that was left over from World War I. It's in 30 odd six also. It's called an old trick. It was cycled. It fired uh, one round at a time. You have to recycle after firing. This one right here was semi on. You can fire it every time you pull the trigger. It would fire around. This one was semi-automatic also. This one was semi-automatic and also fully automatic according to how you set the selector switch. Over here you have what's called a crew serve weapon. It was a light machine gun in 30 odd six. And it was serviced by three guys. This is Corporal Collins. He's with the 5th Platoon. It's Eisenhower put out a proclamation to integrate black troops into the uh, United States Army in certain units. So Eisenhower uh, actually put the proclamation out to do it man for man. 
okay? But he had so much as for ad, adverse uh, reaction from the southern, southern generals and southern officers that he decided on doing it in platoon strength. So what happened is Eisenhower actually put uh, 2,221 men in the infantry units as platoons. This is being actor Lieutenant J.D. Barrett here for Tuskegee Airmen. That was giving him a short idea about the bottom of the top of Tuskegee Airmen in the military. J.D. Barrett. Thank you, Fred. The Tuskegee Airmen were a group of fighter pilots who were claimed to fame was that they never lost a bomber in their missions. They were revered by other white pilots in their ability to fight against the Germans on their, um, on their missions. They were called red tails because of the, the red on the bottom of the uh, uh, pilots or the uh, fighter pilot's wings. There were other groups of fighter pilots of um, squadrons in uh, the 332nd and the 99th Marines. Benjamin O. Davis, the general, uh, who was leading the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, was known and respected throughout the pilots. My privilege and pleasure to introduce Bob Gross. Now, you have seen the reenactors here dressed up in their costumes and everything, but here, Bob Gross is a living soldier from the Korean conflict in the 24th or 25th Infantry. Bob Gross, tell us your story. Okay, as he's mentioned, he, I was of the 24th Regiment, the 25th Infantry Division. I fought in Korea during the Korean War. 1951, on the time I was I stayed there. I was there from April 1951 to October 1951. I was in the last all-black organized unit in the military. And now to get back to the regiment, I was with the 24th Regiment. They were Buffalo Soldiers. They fought during the Indian War. And the reason they were named Buffalo Soldiers because the way they fought the Comanches Indians named them Buffalo Soldiers because of the how they fought them. They were such a tenacity fighters, never gave up, never ran. Ready? Take it. And John, we had a great day here at the Old Barracks, learning more about the three centuries of African American soldiers. And I want to thank you so much, Sergeant Minus, for touring us around, and also through the different generations. So. Thank you so much. And now I am culturally savvy myself. Okay. Thanks to you. <laughs> thank See, you. <laughs> without you, I'd have never known. You're right, and we would have never known. I'm so glad so. you came down, took time out of your busy schedule, because it's so important that. The masses of people know that we didn't just fall in this place, that we have a price that we pay to be in America. You pick up any rock or any stone and you look under it and you'll find a black man or woman lifting America on its shoulders. And that's why we are culturally sad in America. Okay, you heard it here. I'm Annette Njai and I'm culturally savvy.